If you think you need to spend years learning data analytics to land a job, this is simply not true. Today there is a much faster and smarter way to do it and it's not what you might expect. In this video we'll show you how to stop wasting time, learn only what matters and stand out to recruiters in half the time, all using strategies that most people don't even know exist. By the end of this video you will have a step-by-step -step plan to become a data analyst using concepts and strategies that will put you ahead of other candidates. In order to achieve this we need to start understanding how the recruitment market is shifting. If you get this, you will know what to focus on in your job search. Not many people are discussing this, but recruitment has undergone significant transformation in recent months and years. The new approach emerging in the job market is called skills-based hiring. And this means that employers are realizing that traditional hiring practices, which focused on college degrees and titles, are no longer the best way to identify top talents. Skill-based hiring practices are gaining popularity because they focus on assessing an individual demonstrated skills rather than just their formal education or credentials. In other words, this new approach recognizes that practical skills gained through experience or training or self-learning provide better insights into an individual potential success in a role compared to their educational background alone. And this is a great news for all of us because it means that we don't have to worry about getting a three, four, or even five years degree to get a job. Instead, we should focus on our technical and soft skills and how we present them to the world. So long story short, in the past, attending a prestigious university like Oxford or Imperial College could have been the primary factor in securing a job. However, this is no longer the case as employers now care less about the university you attended and more about the experience and skills you possess. And this brings us to the next point, which is to get a job fast, we need to work on the skills that matter the most. Many people become overwhelmed by the skills they think they need to know, to prepare for a job. However, if you want to get a job quickly, you really need to master two or three skills, and that is essentially it. This video is not about the skills required for a specific data role, but to put it simply, for a data analyst role, you would need Excel, SQL, and Tableau or Power BI. For a data scientist role, you would need machine learning with Python, specifically working with TensorFlow and PyTorch, along with uh, some statistical skills and knowledge of how to deploy a uh, ML model. For a data engineer, you will uh, need advanced SQL, cloud platform expertise, and so we are talking about tools like AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud Platform, and an ETL tool like Airflow. I'm not suggesting that you shouldn't learn anything beyond these tools, but my core message is that you should focus on a maximum of three skills to secure a job quickly. And then you can advance once you gain experience in the workplace. Once you have identified the skills you need to learn, the next step is to adopt the most efficient and effective learning method to land the job. And I recommend what I call the build as you learn approach. The goal of this approach Approach, even if it sounds unusual, is to get stuck because that is when you will learn the most. If you only watch tutorials online without practicing, you will never face challenges and will not truly learn. Basically, you don't get stuck. The build as you learn approach means you should start building something, likely getting stuck at the very beginning of the project, and then learn how to overcome those challenges using tutorials or using online resources. For example, with SQL, I'm not saying that you should start building an SQL project today if you don't even know what SQL is. I would recommend watching some tutorials first, but I would also suggest defining and working on a project as soon as you have a basic understanding of what you can do with SQL. And so if we use SQL as an example, I would start by watching a simple tutorial on YouTube about what SQL is and why people use it. Once you understand that SQL is the language to interact with large database to uh, analyze data, you can then find out how to connect to a database and what platform to use to write SQL codes. After figuring out how to set up SQL and connect to a database, define a problem you want to analyze and solve and learn as you navigate each step of your project. And if you need inspiration, I will put here in the screen some projects ideas that you could consider. And actually, let's go through the first one together. So one project could be customer retention predictions for a subscription-based business. So for example, the business scenario could be a company like Spotify or Netflix, which is uh, subscription-based. They maybe want to see how to reduce churn, which means how to reduce people getting away from the business, clients getting away from the business. And so the project goal could be build a model that predicts which customers are most likely to uh, cancel their subscription. Key skills that you can use here could be SQL uh, or Python for logistic regression, classification, or even Tableau for visualization, depending if you aim more for a data analytics or data science 
project. A data set could be a simulated subscription data with fields like the last login, the subscription plan, the number of customers, support interactions and payment issues. And the final deliverable could be a dashboard that shows key churn metrics like the churn rate and list the high risk customers to prioritize. And apart from this, I will show now here in the screen some other examples very similar to this one. So make sure to take a screenshot if you want to uh, check it back later. Once you feel confident with these essential skills needed for the role you're aiming for, the next key step is to build your success stories. And when I refer to success stories, I mean the bullet points on your resumes that will help you stand out from other candidates. You can think of them as mini case studies where you can answer questions like what problem did you solve? How did you do it? And what was the result? During the interview process, a recruiter or potential employer will ask about your past experiences. And this happens 100% of the cases. And so this is where you should respond with the success stories that you have prepared. If you need help building these stories, my first tip is to focus on impact. Choose projects or experiences that had measurable outcomes. For example, you might say that you automated a reporting system that saved 15 hours per week. The second tip is to make it relatable. So frame your story so that recruiters or hiring managers can see how it applies to their problems. And the third tip is to practice your delivery. Be ready to explain your success stories in interviews or networking situations. I personally practice by talking to myself in the living room and you will notice that the first time that you tell the story, it may not come out well, but you will quickly identify the sentences or points that need improvement. And maybe you can write it down in a document and continue refining it. Obviously, this exercise becomes easier as you gain years of experience in the industry. I agree that if you lack work experience, this exercise may be more challenging, but there is no doubt that this is what it makes the most significant difference in a job interview. And also I want you to keep in mind that these success stories should also be at the very top of your resumes because recruiters tend to check only the first two or three bullet points and skip the rest. So you want to ensure that those bullet points they read are the ones that make a difference. And this bullet point on the success stories, if you haven't realized already, is very much linked to what we just discussed about build as you learn approach. In case you don't have previous work experience, the projects that you build can definitely become success stories. And again, if you need examples to make this very practical, here is one. So based on the project idea that we talked about before, you can say something like, I built a customer churn prediction model for a subscription-based business using Python for logistic regression and SQL to analyze key customer behaviors like login frequency, payment history, and support interactions. The model achieved 85% accuracy in identifying high-risk customers and by simulating targeted retention strategies, such as personalized offers and proactive outreach, the approach demonstrated a potential 12% reduction in churn, calculated by comparing predicted churn rates before and after applying these interventions. And here, I think you can immediately see how uh, powerful these success stories might be, especially if I'm interviewing for a company like Spotify or Netflix or another subscription model company. And this is mainly because there are quantifiable results and also is very relatable because a recruiter or potential employer will immediately see the value of this project that you've done. Now, another key concept for securing a job quickly is to work on what I call passive job applications. We are all familiar with the active approach of uh, applying for jobs, which involves clicking the apply button or creating a profile on a career site to apply for a specific position. The factors that can truly make a difference are when other people reach out to you with job openings. I refer to these as passive applications because you have invested time to optimize your profile and now your profile works to make you stand out among other candidates. And this concept definitely applies to LinkedIn where your task is to optimize your profile with a strong headline, a professional profile picture, gauging about me summary and a very well structured bullet points for each experience listed. Also, it is important to include all the relevant skills for the jobs you're applying for, post regularly and respond to all messages you receive. Ideally, you should utilize all the profile sections that LinkedIn provides. And the goal is to continuously improve your profile until you receive a message from a recruiter or a potential employer asking if you're interested in a specific role. This is the signal that your profile is effective and that LinkedIn is promoting you above other candidates, which significantly increases your chances of landing a job. And there you have it, a short video with the steps that I would take to land a job in data in the fastest way possible. If you found at least one useful information in this video, make sure to subscribe to my channel so that I can help you even further in the next videos. And in case you want to learn more about data analytics, I put together a video where I teach pretty much all 
all I learned in my six years of experience as a data analytics lead. This is a huge value compressed in one video only, so make sure to check it out in case you're interested. I will enjoy the rest of your day. Ciao for now and see you in the next one.